Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in and checking out another episode of Drinks with Johnny. We have a very special guest today, the very talented singer, drummer, many facets of life, wonderful Brandon Seller of Atreyu. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, good sir. Of course, of course. This is going to be awesome. So this uh, this time you picked uh, New York Sour. It's a delicious treat. It was, it, was, it was an awesome trial to go through and make these several times and Grueling. drink them. It's, oh, it was. Yeah, it's grueling process. So let's get into it. We're going to make this drink. So I got you some uh, real good bourbon, I think. It's a private select maker's mark. It'll you approve? Do. Yeah. It'll do. <laughs> so you're gonna take two shots of bourbon to start off. And then you go down the line of all these ingredients. Look at this. Look at this. We got ourselves an ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Very key that's fresh squeezed. Fucking crystal lemons from Christo the trees. Crystal lemons Christ. from the trees. Now I actually just learned how to make simple syrup. So I did this, this is my own batch. You take equal parts water and sugar, bring it up to a boil, make sure the sugar all dissolves, call it a day, let it sit, cool it down. Now it's ready for drinks. Johnny simple syrup on sugar. Johnny simple syrup. <laughs> that sounds a little funky, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd trust it. <laughs> <laughs> so the way I did it, just make it easier on me, is I got uh, liquid egg whites, but they gotta be pasteurized. I did not know that. <laughs> I'm already impressed. Yeah, you know, you, you learn something new every day. Can we get that all together, give it a few shakes. And now we pour. Oh yeah, babe. Always make sure you're pouring this over the rocks, or ice as they say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now comes the real fun part, guys. I went out of my way to get a bottle of Opus One. Oh, you did. This is not your blue collar New York South. <laughs> and somewhere out there, there's just one person that is either watching or listening to this right now and is a wine connoisseur, mm -hmm. and they just had a fucking heart attack. I think you better call a doctor, mom. Say a doctor. And to you, good sir or madam, we salute you. <laughs> No, that, that just pissed him right off. Yeah, proceed. The idea behind this red wine floater is to make sure you pull it over the back side of the spoon very slowly so that it stays all the way on top. The normal recipe probably calls for like half a shot. Johnny, I just went from six to midnight. <laughs> it's nice. The true test. <laughs> now that's New York. All right. Cheers, man. Cheers. This is a wonderful New York Saturday. Yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm enjoying it. This is a wonderful program, man. Yeah, thank you. In all seriousness, really, thank you for the time of this drink. Let's talk about your beer, my man. I mean, this is pretty cool looking. I mean, I don't, I don't see too many beers with the comic book shit on it like that. Yeah, like that's yeah, that <laughs> I mean, If you focus in on this can, look how ripped I am. I'm like a Greek <laughs> god. My only problem with it though is I don't understand why you guys took M shadows and put them on. <laughs> <laughs> Just go for the big guns, throw them on your beer. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty rad. But yeah, so Noble is, a, is an amazing brewery from Orange County. How did the marriage of Noble and Atreya really happen? So we had a couple breweries in Orange County that we really liked, Noble being our top pick. Okay. So we met with them, talked about what we might want to do, and came up with this concept of the kind of citrus double IPA. And we're all fans of IPA, so that kind of seemed perfect. Yeah. We got this crazy artwork done, kind of our album art. Us as like weird superheroes is a song on the album called Superhero, which yeah. Shadows sings on. And then all of a sudden we have a beer. It kind of like goes away for a second. And you're like, hey guys, beer's done. We're gonna do the launch party and we're gonna do whatever. And you're like, oh shit, we have a beer. That's so rad. You know? All right, man, this is getting pretty good. Uh, you want to go have a seat over here and uh, continue this chat? It looks comfortable. Yes. Let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. Man, I'm so glad I had my butler set this up. It's so nice of you to take our beers and throw them away too. Yeah, it was really nice of them. Yeah. So, 
As we kind of spoke upon a little bit, Opus One is, you know, it's a very high-end wine out of, out of Napa. It's something that you don't have on an everyday occurrence. It's not what you call a daily drinker. And it's not what you call a daily drinker. <laughs> but you know what? You're a hospitable motherfucker. Oh, thank you. And thank that's, you. That's the truth. Yeah, let's cheers yeah, uh, for the like nine millionth time on this episode. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a counter would be great. Yeah. That's a great idea. This guy's yeah. full of great ideas. I told you. Cheers. Very man. special guest. So, another thing I wanted to ask you about, you guys in the trade went on a little bit of a hiatus. Yeah. And then now you guys are back after Long Live mm -hmm. and uh, the one you're currently on. In our wake. In our wake, that's yeah. right, thank you. I've been drinking. And then... Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a miracle that I was <laughs> You guys are now back and probably better than ever. I mean, it sounds like everything's going really great. Everything yeah. I talked to you about, you guys are on tours. What tour are you coming up on? Uh, we're going out and doing a co-headline run um, it's called the Spring Invasion Tour with Motionless and White. Cool. And a band called Wilson, who's awesome. They're just like a good party band. So Very fun. cool. So I basically, I want to get back to, um, if you don't mind, what, what, what was that hiatus about? I with think, As much as you can give, yeah. obviously you don't want to, you know, you don't want to give away the keys to the castle here. <laughs> but, you know, as much as you can give and like what made you guys realize that you needed to continue a trade and bring it all back together? I think that it came down to... Um, at the time, we had done a trade since we were kids. I turned 18 on tour. You know? Oh, yeah. And we did stop. We have a similar experience there. Yeah. <laughs> so we went going like 10 plus years of just like going, 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 record, tour, record, tour, record, tour. I think it just kind of it started to a little bit kind of sort of burn out. And I don't know about, about you guys. I feel like maybe in a similar headspace where it's like you really take this job as a, as a privilege. Mm -hmm. We're lucky to get what we do and it's like when you kind of get to the point where you're like I'm just out here phoning it in like I don't know that we were kind of like we don't know that we deserve to be here right now like I, I don't you. I wouldn't like, want someone to come pay and come see me play if I know that I'm just kind of like going through the motions. Yeah that's not that's not what you started out to no. do. It doesn't translate you, you can sniff that shit from a mile away. Yeah and you, you, know? you just you don't want to put out a product like no. that. So it was like you know, I think we should go away for a minute. Gotcha. So we went away for a while. Um, I started another band, Howler High Water. Um, awesome band, which you're the front man of. I want it yeah. You're a badass front man. I've seen you, Thank you at a couple of shows running across bars and shit, and it's pretty <laughs> fucking rad. Stage can't hold me down. <laughs> it was fun. It, it, I think that's what uh, taking a break taught us all. It mm -hmm. taught us so much about ourselves individually, maybe kind of like strengthened each other's weaknesses individually. Uh, that when it was time to come around, you know, four or five years later, it was like, let's try this again. And we all really brought our A game back to the table and it was like, we've had this kind of moment of clarity and this break and really time to self reflect and grow. Let's see where we're at now. Yeah. So we came back, you know, a handful of years ago, did a record called Bottom Live. It was like what the, like a tangible, version of what it sounds like when five dudes have pent up aggression and <laughs> put it on tape. It's a very heavy record. Yeah, it's, it's it, heavy, it, it's it fucking is, yeah. fast. There was no, our label was like, singles? They were like, fuck, no. go fuck yourself. They, want, they wanted to become the bull again. Yeah, <laughs> and they saw them, we're like, you're not getting a second of it. And they're like, cool, we love it, that's what, our label's great. That's great, that's um, great, you have so, that relationship with them too. Yeah, so we put out the record, we, we did literally bare minimum. We did like two week tour here, two week tour there kind of dipping our toes back in the water. It felt really good. It felt really good. Our fans were treated us great. A lot of new people were seeing us for the first time. So it was like, let's make another record. Um, you know, we, we in between, I had done a Hell or High Water record. We did a full cycle on that. So there was, was almost another break. Mm -hmm. And it came time. I was like, let's make a record. Let's, let's do something cool. It's really like, let's try this time. <laughs> let's, really, let's go both feet in the fucking yeah. deep end. And, so we went back in with John Feldman, who did uh, Blood Cells Paper Anchor, which was a huge record for us, and uh, just kind of like fucking went for it. Yeah, I remember it was uh, last summer you sent me yeah. this record, and I listened to it pretty pretty often when I was on my walks. I, I, did, I did a walk along the beach like pretty yeah, much yeah. every day, and I was listening to that a lot. And I'd be damned, those are some fucking anthems, bro. You guys came up with some anthems on that record, for sure. And it's not like it's just like there was one. It was like, when I was listening, I was like, damn, like every song has an anthem part. But like in an awesome way. I was like, this is fucking catchy, hooky. 
at the same time, the heavy breakdowns, I literally was thinking while I was listening to this record, I was like, this reminds me of what a trader was when I first joined Avenged. Like when I when I would hear you guys and every night after after we there was a song, um, I should have done my homework to find the actual name of it, but I, it was always stuck in my head that you guys always finished with yeah. at that era. The Living so hard to black, see. Bro. Yeah. Oh no, that's Ain't Love Grant. Uh, yeah, Ain't Love Grant. Oh, look uh, yeah. at you with the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so that's still in there. You know what? You want? I'll tell you a funny story about the yeah. lyrics in a second. Um, but yeah, so it, it sounded like you got this anthem going, and um, and you still got the heavy breakdowns, everything. And I was just so happy to hear that again because I was yeah. like listening, and I was like, hey, "Don't be right, I, I love all the, all your guys' shit." But like when I heard that, I was like, "This is what I remember Atreyu was like." And and but with a new sound, you could clearly hear that everyone was like working together again. Yeah, well, there's a. It's funny because there's a pressure when you come, when you go away for a while, and you come back. There's that immense pressure that's like, you have to make this fucking record. No one's heard shit from you in a while. Yeah, this better be fucking good. So we went like, oh, this would be fucking heavy. Oh, and it, it, I don't know, it was very like knee jerk reaction to making a record. Yeah. And I think a big part of that too was our guitar player was, was, getting, was dealing with his sobriety, he was getting sober. So he kind of had, he had a little bit of a backseat to writing, but in the studio he was kind of like taking care of his health. Yeah. So there was a piece missing on the puzzle. So we had that record, you know, we, we made it and we're proud of it, but it was like, it was very like knee jerk, like ultra, just like, ah, make just music all now. Time. Yeah, totally. Where I think on our, on our awake, we had a, a moment to like reflect on what worked and what felt good about making music again, mm -hmm. what our fans loved, what we loved. And so I think there's a whole new sense of like, like, again, I say moment of clarity when you make this new record where there's not as much pressure because you already did one. Yeah. It, it just all seemed like it make more sense, you know? Yeah, you could, and you can hear it. I mean, yeah. like, uh, as, some, as someone, an outsider listening and stuff, you can hear it. You can, and I actually think it was a brilliant progression to come back to. You had to come back. You got to be real. You got to come back with, what, with what's in your heart, and you got to keep working. I mean, that's something that I don't know that a lot of songwriters talk about it as much, but like, for me, and I think it sounds like it, it is for you. It's, it has a lot to do with writing in the moment yeah. and you know, making friends with that moment first and then get moving forward and not yeah. trying to force something. I feel like every record we, the Traders ever made is very much a picture of where we're at at that time. Mm -hmm. No other moment in time matters. Yeah, but you're not thinking about, oh my God, is this song gonna be around 10 years? Yeah. No, you don't it's think about that shit. Where are we at right now? People will listen to that and say, okay, that's where they were at right now. Mm -hmm. It's like anyone else. If a painter makes paintings and the paintings from the fucking 40s or the 50s or the 60s are different, whatever. Cause it's like there's a different expressions of that. Yeah. That's the same thing with music. So you have to, it, like, you have to be, I feel like the only way is to follow that road because anything else comes off as contrived and, and bullshit. And everyone can sniff bullshit from a mile away. Oh, especially these days, man. Yeah. With, with everything that's out there right now, it, it's done. Like, you, you gotta be yourself, because if you ain't, like, everyone knows it. There's a million bands that sound the same. Yeah. They all will do okay. Yeah. You know? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, but absolutely. be yourself and it always works out. Well, I'm just super glad that we're, uh, we're still able to do this shit together, man. Yeah, it's a phenomenal thing. This is thing. fucking awesome. Where, where's the counter? Where's the counter? <laughs> I've traveled so far on the road back Okay, so. Getting back to that first tour and um, all you guys' songs and everything, there was there was a specific song that was always stuck in our heads yeah. after you guys you guys used to end with it on that tour. And it was the it's so hard to see yeah. when you guys what's the name of it again? Ain't Life Grant. Life Grant. Ain't Life Grant. One o'clock, the weekend news roundup goes on. So as I know, we'd be in the dressing rooms when we'd, when we'd hear it, you know, especially on the nights where we're, we're very wrapped up and you guys are closing out and we're getting ready and stuff. We'd be in the back going, it's so hard to pee when your dick is frozen <laughs> to the back of your leg. <laughs> That's a 
visual right there. <laughs> it totally was. Do you get that at all from like any yeah. other bands and stuff? Like, what? You so where is this one? Where is this one grade? I would say this is a good like this is a good B plus A minus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've had. Uh, I'd expect more from us, but you know, I get it. I mean, what I meant was. No. <laughs> C minus. Uh, I feel like. I recanted that story the other day when I knew that we were going to do this episode, yeah. and I was like, I wonder if he has any idea that we used to sing that. <laughs> I think if, if there's any band in existence that hasn't done that to another band they've been on tour with, they have no souls. No, totally. And yeah, you don't want to. You don't no want to tour with them. Humor. Yeah, you don't want to tour with them. them. No. Don't give them tours. <laughs> Seriously, thank you so much for coming, man. Cheers. For me. Another cheers count. Cheers, count it. Cheers to everyone watching. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.